Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Untold Stories of Berks County Artists. This is such a fun series here in the People Chronicles, and I must say thank you to the Y Missing Foundation, to the Berks Arts Council, and the Pennsylvania Partnership for the Arts to, for making this series possible. Nettie Price is with us. Hi, Nettie. Hi, Joe. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I've been looking at your art. I want to buy this. I want to put it in my office. You're filled with bright fun. I am, yes. In the short time that I've known you, since you've come in here, I feel like your art really reflects your personality. It does. It does. Yeah. I, my artwork is definitely an extension of myself, and it's pretty plain and simple. You know, with my artwork, my goal is to be happy. That's it. Have fun. That's all. Be happy and have fun. Now, yeah. before you embrace this as this is what I'm going to do for a living, you did something else. Um, I did a few other things. Um, before I was a full-time artist, I was a teacher um, for the BCIU. And what did you teach? I taught math and science at the oh prison my. and the youth detention center. I thought you were going to tell me you taught art. No, um, I, I kind of did on a cart. It was called Art on a Cart, which was kind of cool because I'd like stroll around and I used to pretend I was a lunch lady, you know, with my cart. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, anybody want to paint? And so that was in addition to my other duties of being oh, a teacher. Oh, I thought you were going to say, and then you painted numbers and taught science and math. No. No, that was separate. Okay. Well, yeah, that was like more of the hobby or the, gotcha. the extracurricular, not extracurricular, but just the side classes that the kids could have. And, um, but I, I did, I, um, especially the last, the last five years, I taught just math and science. And um, that was it. Any other careers? Um, before that, I was married and we had an auto body shop. And I graduated from Penn State um, in animal bioscience. I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. Wow. And didn't do it, went back to art school. And then I ended up getting my master's in education and was a teacher, and that was it. Here I am. It's, it's perfect to see, you know, often young people, um, high school seniors, just struggling, what do we want to be? Oh. And now, looking back, I mean, I was at the same place, but now looking back, it's just, just go be something because it's okay to reinvent and you probably will. Oh, absolutely. And in retrospect, it takes a lot of different um, experiences and learning and people and situations and it all contributes to your path. Mm -hmm. So you may be at a point in your life right now where you feel as though you're not doing what you really love or that you're just doing it to pay the bills, but you'll use those skills. You'll use those skills in the future. You just have to have confidence and faith in yourself that you're gonna find your way. I mean, I took a tour of the state school system. I went to, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> It took me six years to get an undergrad because I was Did it? in art and then I was in science and, you know, just just all over the map. But How did it come full circle to art for you? That's a good, good question. Um, it was actually my own unhappiness that mm -hmm. brought it about. Um, when, I, when I was a teacher, it was, I enjoyed the kids, I loved the kids. However, there was a part of me, that nagging part in the back of your head, that says, this isn't what I should be for my life. Oh. And I knew that, and, but I still did the artwork, and I, I started doing little paintings. And it was just a little four-inch painting of a cat. It was actually one of the students who I painted as a cat. And this poor kid used to come in, and he was bullied, and he, used, he had a Band-Aid to keep his glasses together. Oh. And it was unfortunate because he got bullied for that. Mm -hmm. So I painted him as this tiny little cat. And, and it was just that part that is like, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I painted him, and that was the beginning. That was the seed. And I realized that my artwork really brought happiness to me. Oh. And that was the turning point. It was just one little painting. And then I just started painting and painting and growing and learning more and... and um, I did my artwork for my own happiness. Is it fair to say, listening to this story, that at that point you liked to doodle, you were experimenting, or were you envisioning, I'm going to go here? No. By the no. way, look at that cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I had always painted. I, art since you're little? Absolutely. Since oh, I was okay. two, oh, okay. as I grew up, my mom uh, was an art teacher before I was born, All and right. she always had like really cool stuff for us to do. And, I lived, um, are you familiar with Tuckerton Road? Yes. yes. Where Goodman Vending is now? Yes. I lived in the old stone farmhouse that they tore oh, down. Wow. So, oh, wow. I know. Oh, <laughs> I cried. I cried. 
cry. I bet. So when I was a kid, I would just go out and ride my horses to the river and go to the pool, and I was just really free and happy, and it was great. And then, uh, where's this question going? So there's that full <laughs> circle. No, wait a minute. You were free and happy. There's a wonderful yeah, memory, and then absolutely. life happened, and you brought yourself right back to that space. So full circle. Yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. So full circle is, I, here I am in my hmm, 30s. I'd gone through a divorce, um, went out of, we had a business and stopped it. I got a job and I'm working in, you know, with these kids who, who need so much. You know, yeah. they need a lot of emotional support. They need attention. They need all of these things. And, and then finally, as I progressed, I found myself teaching in the prison. And for me, that's the complete opposite of what truly made me happy. And I found that I was just so stuck. Yeah. You know, so stuck, and it was like I have to do something. And I would go home, and after the little seed was planted, and you know, I started selling, and the business was growing, and then it was like almost like an obsession, like I will be happy, you know. <laughs> and I realized that happiness is a conscious choice, and you could see it in the people in prison, you know, you could see it in the kids who couldn't adapt, and you could see it in the kids who could adapt. You know? And it was had to do with choosing happiness, choosing, choosing to be happy despite choosing despite yeah. your despite what's going on. It doesn't matter the outside world. And it was funny because when I sit at these shows, mm -hmm. you know, the, the show, and I see all my artwork, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, oh boy, there's a theme here. <laughs> you know, and it's like, why do I paint this way? Why do I do this? And I realized it was just my own expression, my own, like. I will be happy. It is a choice. How do you come about that? What do you have to do to create that happiness in your own life? And that's what I want to share. And you, you, you do that very well. I and do you've that. Allowed now. that. My goodness, you've experienced it yourself, and you witness it. I guess from the story of the first drawing of mm -hmm. the cat who was a student, yeah. and you're saying, despite whatever's out there, you can be happy too. Absolutely. And here's this wonderful picture. Absolutely. So, are these? Forgive my ignorance. Are mm -hmm. these oil paintings? No, acrylic. What is it? That's acrylic. Acrylic. Yeah. Okay. And the sparkly part. That is. Um, for I me, like I do. I love the sparkle. Yeah. And it's so funny because I went to the Academy of Fine Art in Philadelphia and there was a time in my life where I thought I wanted to be a medical illustrator. Oh my. Yeah. It's and like, <laughs> so yeah, very no different. joke. Yeah. So oh. I had like professors behind me like, oh, no, 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 don't go that way. You know, don't paint this way. Don't, do, so controlling. And when I started doing this, I'm like, I'm going to use glitter. How about that? <laughs> How's that? I'm going to try to control my stuff. I put glitter, and I loved it. It's like the reflections, and I, for me, the glitter is that intangible thing that is in life that everyone, if you're aware, you see it. Mm. It's like that. That, what do you call it? It's that. It's that. It's, it's that. It's that extra little something. And we can have it if we want it. And you can is have what you're it telling me. if you choose it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you want to go to AC Moore and buy it, it's six bucks. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Speaking of AC Moore and buying it and you had a show, I know you just were showing in, mm -hmm. in I believe, Ocean City, Maryland. Mm -hmm. So how did you, if you can share a little bit, turn this passion and drive to choose happy into the, a wonderful, thriving business? Well, um, that's a great question, too. I, I knew how to paint. Yep. Um, I had a good education. And teaching really taught me a lot about how to plan. You know, when you're a teacher, you have right, to do right. your planning and you have to be able to um, explain and present something, whatever mm -hmm. that may be, whatever mm -hmm. your topic is. So for me, I, I was like, okay, fine. I have to be able to plan and teach my buyers what, you know, what I have to offer. So. I think that's, there are some fundamental steps you, know, you have to do in, to be able to take your artwork and to make it into a thriving business because it's two di very, very different things. I mean, you can sit at home and paint all night and all day and it doesn't matter if you can't take it to the, if you can't take it, sell it, make a profit, bring it to the market. And so bringing it to market, what mm -hmm. would you share with um, young artists? today who are mm -hmm. watching and listening to your story, mm -hmm. what are some s measures and steps they might take? And maybe we could use that for an example because you just developed something <laughs> brand new. <laughs> yeah, that, I know, right? This Yay. is wonderful. <laughs> I, I want to talk about that. Or can you tell me about this and the success you've just had? It's um, a 
work. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I had an idea. I wanted to do um, a pet sympathy um, mini book mailer. That's what I call it. And essentially what it is, it's a story that I wrote and I illustrated it and it benefits the Animal Rescue League of Berks County. And currently um, I wrote it, made it, I have it printed and then um, it's available in the Hallmark stores in Naples, Florida, and also throughout in other stores throughout the country, which I travel extensively. Um, my artwork now can be found in Vermont all the way down to the Caribbean. Congratulations. I know. That's fantastic. <laughs> I know. It's fun. It's good. It's, it's amazing how things, you know, you just have to be persistent and keep, you know, so keep going. So what's up with the vending machine in the Caribbean? Well, What's I that have. Story? I actually have two vending machines here. I have one. And at what Judy's do you vend? <laughs> packs of magnets, and what they are. Oh, okay. It's something I designed. Um, I wanted to have a vending machine that would be able to sell my artwork, and I wouldn't have to be there. Uh, passive oh, income. Brilliant. I wanted passive income. Not that I make a lot of money from it, but it is. Um, just a way to get it out there for marketing. And um, this is a, it has my little artwork. So there's one at Judy's on Cherry down the street. And there's also one at the Animal Rescue League. And I'm going to have a third one. And it's going to be in Tortola. Of course, so, in the Caribbean. Where else would I you know. go? <laughs> I know. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, this is just another avenue. But to get back to your question on how artists can you know, bring their idea to market, there are very many different ways. Like for my business uh, model, I do the vending machines. I do wholesale, retail shows. Um, wholesale is where you sell directly to stores mm -hmm. and then they sell your product. So it's, it's almost um, like an extension. So I don't have to sell every single one. Um, I sell online. And I do uh, painting parties where we get together oh, and we paint. You do those? Oh yeah, yeah, it's fun. Um, I do them for like organizations or mm -hmm. like the galleries that I sell my artwork to. And I really get out there, like I get on the road, I travel my little Ford Escape in my trailer, I put 130,000 miles. In one year? No, since I had it. Okay. But still, it's a lot of driving yes, for me. Yes, it is. I travel, you know, to Florida. So there's two kinds. These are original mm -hmm. pieces that, yeah. that are on the set here? That you've no, created? that's not an original. This is not no, an original. No, and that's another thing is, um, as far as business goes for an artist, if you sell, you know, I can put in however long it takes to sell one piece of artwork, but my intention when I started my business was I wanted it to be available to everyone. And not everyone can afford, you know, original an pieces, original right? piece of art. But the one behind you is a canvas print. It's a gicle print that I have a company that makes for me, and you can't tell the difference. So that <laughs> sells at a price point where if you're decorating your kid's room, or you, you can wanna, put that in there. Yeah, and if you, that is $225. That's great. So it's reasonable. That is, that is. That was it really, really is. important to me is that I wanted something that would be reasonable, accessible. Um, I didn't consider my artwork to be any, anything lofty or, you mm -hmm. know, out there or. It's. Yes, fun, fun. happy. And, and there's coloring books. You coloring. really turned your art into something for everybody, right. and every bit of it is, hey, get a slice of happy. Yeah. I like <laughs> it. I, I, really like it. <laughs> I like it. Nettie, this is yeah. fantastic. Continued success. What's your next, is there a show in this area oh, coming up? I'm so glad you asked that because I'm so excited. You know, as far as my next project, I have been waiting for a year um, patiently. And I'm on the list to get one, but my next thing is, is I want to have a mobile gallery. I want to get a bread truck. So I live down the street from Stroman, or where they have the, the bread trucks, and I'd walk by them every day longingly, when I walk. Longingly, I can see you longingly. I do. I have okay. a picture on my cell phone. I can show it to you, and I stand there, and I look at my bread truck. I'm like, I'll take you. And then I'm going to peel off the big muffin that's on the side, and I'm going to paint it up, and I have it all like worked out in my head as far as what it's going to look like. So I'm going to get a mobile. It's going to be called the Sparkling Art Mobile. Oh, I love it. I know. It's going to be so cool. And I'm going to have like a lift gate on the back so then I can just go into shows and then I can travel the stores and I can travel. I just want to travel. I want to go to the Grand Canyon and sleep on top of the roof and look at the stars. And go to Red Rocks and display your art there. Anywhere. I'll go anywhere. So I that's what's to... next for you. Right. Does Stroman know that you're eyeing out their truck? Oh my gosh, I've stocked those poor okay. diesel mechanics. <laughs> I go in with coffee and donuts. I'm like, hi. They're like, not another two months. 
<laughs> and really, I said, I know you think that I'm such a pain, but they know me. They're like, honey, we have your phone number. We'll call you. But really, you call me. Yes, I do. Yes, they know. I don't, I don't think you're a pain. I think you bring joy wherever you are, <laughs> in your own person and in your art. Nettie, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay.